I felt bad. Kenema's like losing everything. He's trying to recommission his troops. He constantly has he now has Calliope raining down on him. Oh my god. Hello everyone, this is GreyShot17. Today I'm doing a Company for Heroes 2 replay. This is a 4v4 on the map uh, White Ball Express. We got ourselves here uh, Biggles, uh, Kenemma, Red Clock, and Ashley versus the real Krill, Dimitri, uh, K, and Nighthawk. I know, shocking, none of these are people that you should know, which means anyone here could win. And that's because someone here submitted a uh, replay asking me to cover it, and I was uh, kind of like, you know what? Sure, why not? Let's cast a replay. And I do those on Sundays uh, during the morning, typically, unless there's a technical issue, which always happens. But today is not that hopeful, hopefully that day. Today is the day we cast. And what are we casting? Well, a British, an American, another American, and a Soviet, one of which going B4, yay, uh, fighting ourselves uh, <laughs> two, no, three OKW and an Austier on a map that's pretty well balanced. I really, really enjoy what... Uh, white ball and red ball, respectively. We got uh, double sturms. We got Pontiful Slayers coming on in, so a nice little variety. Um, actually, we have two Grand Offensive and Breakthrough, so we could possibly be seeing a lot of Pontiful We are going to be seeing a lot of Pontiful Slayers. Makes sense. They're very good infantry when upgraded. So, And by the way, when I do cast this, I cast it live with chat going to my right. So chat, if you have anything you want to bring up, make sure you do so. I am totally fine with you bringing up something that, that goes into the game. Kind of your have your opinion read out, potty chance. MG currently suppressing conscripts. We have a flank going on in, but they were being suppressed right before due to this little Rashlon model. Yeah, one guy hangs behind and he suppresses the whole patch. Good job, man. Good job. Grad ears are still shooting the target. I love how this guy is still alive somehow and suppressing everyone. Fantastic work. Anyway, riflemen are being chained. Uh, I'm assuming they are, were being chained, suppressed, but now the great ears are causing so much damage and so putting so much power all over them that uh, it's just kept them suppressed. We have a smoke going on the MG, but it's I, I don't know what you're going to do. Decent grenade, but again, the troops are going to need to pull back. Um, I will say Sturm is retreating, which means that he pushed up and it backfired, but the one thing I will say is, like, you didn't really have anything to follow up with killing him, so... Uh. Anyway, Pathfinder's coming in. Oh my god. He went... Uh, uh, Airborne Company. And then we also got ourselves Urban Assault and Counterattack. Uh, we have Fortifications as well, so... We have a good selection of Doctrines right now. Some Artillery doc uh, uh, Doctrines. So I, I, I find it very weird we're seeing a whole pa Pathfinder group right now. Uh, Pudsful Slayers are kind of being... Controlled with one single click. They're trying to figure out what to do. British are, might be taking advantage of that and try to put pressure on him as much as possible. Yep, there goes that unit. One unit remains holding back three units. We'll see how this goes. Where's the other Pathfinders? They retreated. You did not get an ambulance. You should, uh, as the great, uh, philosopher Ace once said, get a fucking ambulance, you, you noob. So... Make sure you get ambulance by, uh, on, like, your third build it, th third or fourth unit, so that way, uh, you can make sure you reinforce those guys. Yes. Anyway, uh, Rifleman opening fire on the Stern Pioneer. Conscript's coming, again, this Stern Pioneer it seems to be way overextended. He's probably gonna lose at this rate. Uh, Malta goes in, he's gonna retreat, and you'll absolutely lose it. I guess he was, the idea was hold the base as long as possible. Come on, right, if the riflemen don't kill this, that is 100% on them. Oh my god, how the hell did he live? That, oh, alright. That man was he paid off, I swear to god. I'm gonna say it was paid off. Also, this guy's going only Stern Pioneer, which is very interesting. Because that's... I mean, like, it's 300 manpower, so it's a little more expensive. Not the most expensive. Um, but, like, against with, like, penals or something, it's, I would still say it's pretty expensive. But still, uh, this keeps getting closer. You know these guys have AT grenades, right? Like, British man, key, you you know. Oh, he's suppressing him. That's why he's not worried. All right, now you should be worried. Oh, he does have the munitions. Don't need to worry. Although you don't know that. So maybe you do need to worry. 
P worry factor middle tier. How about that? How about stage three uh, worry? Anyway, uh, allies are decapping this fuel. They have the fuel on the right. They're doing rather well. They're actually already built caches. Um, the American player has. Again, I still think the American player needs uh, some sort of... Uh, how do I put this nicely? An ambulance. Um, to make sure these guys are healing on the front. And also to heal the guys which have already lost like a third of their health. But hey, that's just me. Ponsiful Slayers are opening fire. And they do manage to uh, be driven back. On the right, we have uh, American forces trying to cause havoc, but due to the reinforcement bunker, that is not happening. There's just literally healing through it, which is quite funny. So Kenema is just trying to be like, all right, well, uh, hopefully I, I can reinforce faster than you can kill me. Um, why do you have Panzer Shred? Okay. And he also has a half track. Does he have like one group that's Panzer Shred focused or one group that isn't? Maybe? Um... A little weird, uh, just because of the fact it's six minutes in the game. Unless I'm missing something, like mechanized, then I then I can see it. Uh, but I'm not seeing any light armor. Just your, I mean, look, uh, the real cr uh, Krill got a conscript build, so that's more standard. This American's more standard with rifleman rachelon, with again rifle grenades, which makes sense you know, while he's going with um, urban assaults. You want to use that? What the hell is this guy? This guy is just diving deep with his stern pioneers. Oh my god. So, very interesting to see. He is going very deep with those terms. Far mo oh, there's an ambulance. See, Dimitri got himself an ambulance, and it's almost dead. But he still got it. That's what counts. Not, you know, sacrificing it and killing a medics, but getting one. That's what counts. Anyway. Uh, yeah, Sturbs take the point and decide, yeah, I'm gonna leave. Conscripts are trying to hold the line. They do have AT grenades and Molotov, so they will Molotov the, the retreat path of the Sturm Pioneer and try to get him. Sturm Pioneer decides to hide in a bush, and then is like, yeah, that's probably not the best idea. Probably should pull back. Uh, again, good, uh, so far, the, while, well, yes, the alleys have a cash down, the Axis do not, for sure. And that is a big issue because, uh, again, OKW has three... Uh, oh, sorry, not OKW, sorry. The, uh, uh, sorry, the OKW has the inability to build caches. Maybe they can build a, uh, you know, a, a 223, or 221 that evolves into a 223. Uh, but unfortunately, they don't have the ability to build cache themselves, which means cache duty is Kenema's court. So, we'll have to see if he manages to fulfill that destiny and give all of his allies, uh, you know, capture territories, uh, cash, or he's just like, I don't have the manpower for this. Uh, unfortunately, manpower is going to be a, a big issue as the Ponser 2 just literally ignores all the infantry and slowly starts killing him. Why is this unit here? I don't know, but it is dead. And now that man is T-posing. Congratulations. Uh, unfortunately, AEC decides, eh, Ponser 2, may, may, I'll just keep the guys here so that way I can, you know, take you out. And yeah, he fell for it and absolutely fell apart, which is 60 fuel that, uh, unfortunately, Red Clock just threw down the drain, uh, for not retreating a little bit sooner. We do have medics here, we have the forward base, so, we, again, we have some decent, uh, abilities coming on in, so, uh, it's a little far forward, I would say, and I, again, as someone who put a base, like, what was it, right here yesterday, I, uh, yes, it is far forward, but, um, at the very least, it is currently healing right now, and it will help the American out, who's still, oh, no, he got an ambulance, good. He just now got an ambulance. Anyway, Pathfinders are moving on in. We got ourselves Conscripts just chilling. Grenadiers over here, okay. They're trying to hold the line. This guy has two Grenadiers. One, again, Vet 3, I'll give credit. He must have got a good rifle grenade or something. Or maybe kill a lot of troops that are pushing on in, like this guy is now. Uh, Dimitri's trying to advance. He does have Rangers, uh, but he doesn't have any upgrades for them. This Ranger squad is actually really deep in enemy lines. Captain trying to do some work. Um, he's probably going to die, I would assume. Oh, my God. This, yes, this is what happens when you have two Grenadiers, both with LMGs, and uh, they can literally just mow you down. So, come on. Um, my favorite faction right now is the Soviets, not because I am currently uh, biased with counterattacks. By the way, thank you very much, Ronnie, for the sub. 
Very kind of you. So later in the stream, I'll be eating more Japanese snacks because of you. So thank you. I, I have sub goals. Anyway, a uh, little challenges essentially. Been a while, but good to know that uh, you're back. And how's your day, comrade? Doing well. I'm currently watching pa uh, Pathfinders uh, uh, fight Pentacle Solaire, so I would say it's a good day. Commando's now throwing a grenade. Uh, Kubel blocks him and made it, saved his life. AT gun from the, uh, chain the Kubel, forcing it back. Again, the Allies have a solid line. They don't have a Vickers, but they have enough troops that they've been holding back the infantry. Though there's a lot of Panzer Fusiliers advancing. I don't know how long they keep holding. Universal Carrier needs to get in that fight and provide that little fire support. Again, could suppress the infantry. Um, again, it'd be better than being AT grenaded. Alright, there we go. He reacts. Suppression is active. He's trying to heal his forces. Um, which have not been upped in any capacity. So, a key, hopefully you get that done. Oh, by the way, key went wing Vanguard operations. For those who are like, what doctrine did he go? Looks like real cut knife lost some of his infantry. He's trying to fight in mid. Unfortunately, a mortar hit is not enough to deal with these grenadiers. But as this gun absolutely pulverizes them, they'll need to go back for some repairs. Actually, uh, not repairs, some heals. And yeah, he's going to pull them back. I think that was a misclick. I think the other squad would have been fine. Conscripts though taking mid. Pack gun opening fire on the half track. Might be able to kill it. Aw, oh, nope. Good micro. Makes him get around the building. Left hand side, those stern pioneers, again, in mass with support gun and half track are locking it down. They also have a flak in placement to make sure if it just walks on into that sector, they get absolutely blasted by some uh, flak power. So we'll have to see how that continues to go. Uh, Pontiful Salier is opening fire on the AT gun. We got ourselves the Mortar here as well, which is now in harm's way, though he's pulling back. Commandos have a tree coming on. They did knock out the Rakan Morpher, so I think they have a Mortar Pit, right? They have a Mortar something? No. And, oh yes, the American Mortar. Okay, it pulled back. I'm like, I know they have some type of Mortar over here. Oh my god, Pontiful Slayers overextended themselves. Commandos might, they do. And that's a pretty good unit just dying. Uh, so that leaves two Pontiful Slayers. So Ashley is... May launch an offensive, but I don't think he has that much to commit to it. Um, yeah. Once again, I'm surprised by how deep these Stern Pioneers are going. Uh, Rashlons are being taxed. We're dealing with them. Now, normally I would say that is pretty much not likely to win. But in this scenario, you have a ri uh, rifle grenades that are automatically firing upon the enemy. Th they'll do some work. Stern Pioneer coming on in as well. Rifle grenades are continuing to fire, but as long as they move... They take a little less damage. And again, these guys also need to gain cover. Now, with the second squad, yeah, they're probably not going to win. Unless they get really lucky. Are we seeing another emplacement here? Oh, okay. He's actually helping his ally out. So, Biggles is like, hey, listen. I need to make sure that my ally is flank secure. I'll build uh, this position here and hold. Problem, when the American Blob steals your... Uh, you know, your ally's AT gun and use it as an M1 to then blast that. You, you need something a little more to make sure it survives. It didn't cause a little suppression, but it's not going to be enough. Support gun's opening fire. They are blobbed up, so it could be a fantastic hit coming on in. Luckily, Ashley is coming in to send an infantry, and it looks like there's not enough. Now, do you have a retreat point? Or you have going, he's going all the way back to base, because there's the major. Which is going to leave the Brit by himself against the incoming blobs. Though, a light gammon bomb did a really nice hit right there. Pontiful Slayers and uh, trying to hold, but Vickers is going to suppress. We get a nice grenade, but only kills a single model. And Puma dives on in, trying to hit the AC. The AC dodges right into, uh, actually next to the M1, which is guarding it. Which is perfect, because if the Puma dives it, the M1 will shred him. And the AC can finish him off. Again, good teamwork. Nice grenade, though. Pontiful Slayers uh, managed to almost kill an infantry section. Very, very close to. Puma tries to get a finishing shot. AC returns fire with an M1. AC might give chase. Stern Pioneer squad, though, with the Shrek could do a lot. So he's going to actually fall back and move back to a better position. Someone says it always throws them off when the allies are red. Yeah, I, I kind of agree. I, I think it's just because most historical maps picture the Germans and the Japanese uh, as red and the allies as blue. And then maybe like neutral countries as white. I think that's I think that's how normally it goes for a lot of maps. And to be fair, I get why. If you look at like color scheme and like the countries, I think France is always blue. I think UK is like purplish. 
uh, and then I think of um, the United States as being like a lighter blue. So like if, or like whatever the opposite blue. So if, it, if France is dark blue, then America is light blue or something along those lines. But then I think, Ger yeah, but then like maybe with the German flag and the Japanese flag and stuff like that, you kind of think more red. So. And of course, like, nice kill, by the way. Stern Pioneers coming on in. Infantry uh, shredding it, so yeah, they're not going anywhere. Half strike opening fire. But yeah, but yeah, I think that's, and I, I could be wrong with this, but um, from what I recall, there was a study that was done based on colors. And uh, overall, uh, uh, by the way, nice kill on the Stern Pioneer Squad. Why do you have all three with Shreks? That really limits your capabilities unless you're really trying to bring up the mortar support and say, these support guns will do a lot of damage and hopefully hold back the blob. Another flak emplacement here uh, facing a wrong direction, but it looks like it is opening fire and it is suppressing them. Uh, AT gun is out of range, so it's going to take a little bit of time for them to wear it down. So infantry might be stopped in the meantime. But yeah, anyway, there was a study, and I think it... I don't, it has something to do with like how people react to color and certain colors actually bring out different tendencies um, like I believe pink was actually one of the more aggressive colors for whatever reason it like or at the very least it drove people a little batty to have pink um, as a full color uh, again more pronounced in oh nice kill by the way on the rifleman more pronounced in males than females uh, was it but red was also an a uh, color that was also like an active like a more aggressive color um, Where blue is usually a more soothing color, which is why you see uh, But like for example if you go to like a hospital or something like that There are certain colors that they paint their walls at typically because it's shown like hey for patients dealing with stress These are de-stress colors and that really helps and I think blue is for whatever reason the human mind registers it as a s more soothing relaxing color Again, this is it took. I th this is from back in college, so I have to recall. But like, there's some. Uh, there's uh, my my uh. Well, some of my professors were like, "Hey, like, here's some interesting stuff that you probably didn't know about." Sir Pioneer Squad, uh, which is probably gonna die, and you will know about that. Yep, shock troops immediately kill him, and he's down to two squads. We have air support coming on in. Wow, nice job, Centaur. Ten kills, just murdering all the Elvis Sodaten. Uh, Ponsville Slayers. Uh, not gonna hold too, lo too much longer. Uh, we got the flak trying to shoot down the planes. Oh, it's not Cervix, sorry. It's strafing support. That's what's flying in right now. Now, the MG could probably hit these forces. AC diving on in, trying to get a shot. Puma reacting over here. Um, Ashley is gonna have a panther up, but in the meantime, Centaur is just absolutely dominating. Oh, okay, so, uh, Raging Storm guy. Okay. Alright, so that's a good one. So, Jubin, thank you. Um, the and the so the Germans are green and the Russians are red. That I can I could see that because I also see a plane crashing into the Allied base and luckily none of them died. That's incredibly lucky. Meanwhile, on the left we have ourselves a Panther pushing on in against the conscript. Jackson is forcing it back. Um, again, Kenema still has the okay force. It's not great. But it's at least doing something. Uh, meanwhile, we can see here the real uh, Kreif is getting himself a uh, KV-1, which is going to be annoying. Re oh my god, Reshalon, get the heck out of there. Or are you going to die? It seems like Dimitri is losing quite a number of his men, including a half-track, which is unfortunate. Again, Panther manages the dodge or bounce most of those shots. But on the right, we have a Puma going in for a fight. We also have some, uh, you see, propaganda going off, which is from the, uh, what is it, from the officer. Another Panther uh, co coming up with the Puma. Come on, can they do some work? They might be able to kill the AC if they get a good hit. They do, and the AC goes down, which is unfortunate. He's going to keep chasing six pounders looking the wrong way. Uh, do they place mines? I don't see any mines, but yeah, it may be a situation where you, you want to pull back and you don't want to engage too much. Because again, I, I love Brits because they do get mines, and they are super effective with their mines. All right, someone says the axis is gray or dark gray. I Again, that... That makes 100% sense. Like, I just think of, like, all the world maps and all the video games that have, like, the moving colors. Um, or, like, oh, nice shot with the AT gun. Knocked out the Agponser. Another one is, like, Emperor Tigerstar, his maps. Usually it's blue for territory. Purple for, like, 
of third party and green as like third party and then like red is like the war territory so anyway uh pathfinders again these are bar finders mind you because they've been upped opening fire on the support guns forcing the back luckily headquarters should stop them from pushing any further bagels has lost all but one stern pioneer squad so he is not doing great with his preservation you do you know who is doing great Nighthawk. Nighthawk has a lot of good men. Look at all these Pathfinders. They have so many good kills. Artillery, though, is coming down. Uh, I think it's zeroing? It is, and it's absolutely clobbering the Allied base. Uh, I think someone may not have been paying attention because uh, Key just lost all of his men. Literally, I'm not even joking. He lost everything from that zeroing artillery. Like, all of his infantry is dead. Rip. The American still has a fighting force, though. I don't know how long he's going to last against two opponents. The enemy is overrunning one of our capture points. Anyway, Puma's giving chase. That one Pathfinder squad, it's not going to hold. He's going to need to pull back. So the right side is completely falling apart, which is unfortunate because that's one of the more stable fuel points for the allies axis though will finally get it and should be able to hold it just fine maybe that'll allow uh was it red clock to more focus in mid with his limited forces and help out his team which don't be wrong it's not like kinema is doing too badly he's holding double pack guns or will hold back even a kv but it is something where he's on the, his last defensive line rather than being a little more forward so yeah it could be bad if he loses that he's getting another panther which will help hold against the armor we'll see how long that lasts uh, meanwhile, we got ourselves the T-34, the Howitzer, Jackson, etc. So a number of good forces across the board. But yeah, allies will at least control the fuel, so even though they lost the right, they'll gain control of the left. So the Brit is right now luckily having a decent amount of manpower against three infantry section like that. Uh, don't be wrong, you're still going to need time to rebuild his army, but at the very least he has reserves, which is more than what I can say for others. Um, Nighthawk, though, still has a very suitable army with double Jacksons backing him up. So if one of the, again, we've seen this time and time again this game, if one of these players just so happens to just go forward and be like, eh, the allies are done, they're destroyed, and don't, don't be wrong, they're grabbing a bunch of free uh, stuff, which is always a plus. Um, and it's not like Ashley and Red Clock have small armies. Um, okay, Red Clock's a little more, but it, they could, he can possibly divide and conquer. It's essentially, what was it? Uh, God, what was it? Oh, uh, for, for those who don't know, uh, there's a channel called World War II uh, by Time Ghost, and they do uh, World War II week by week. Great kill, by the way, over there. He forgot to retreat again, which I think that may reduce. Oh, nope. He still has one. He still has one squad, and it's making a howitzer. Ugh. Uh, anyway. Panther trying to get that T-34. Lots of allied armor, though, playing very defensive. He's probably shocked. Like, wait, where's all the infantry section coming from? I thought it killed all of it. But anyway. Um, reason I bring it up is, uh, one of the pioneers was Ravel, uh, in, during his Battle of North Africa right now. Um, 79 years ago. was like, oh, there's all these isolated British sectors. Destroy them individually and we can just keep pushing. Anyway, speaking of which, uh, or destroy them together with assault artillery, which is exactly what's happening. Luckily, gets out of the building. Infantry manages to get out without really any major casualties. All of them retreat. Mortar's still there chilling. He's like, please, I deal with artillery all the time. I can deal with this. And yeah, he lives. We also have LEFH artillery raining down, which the allies do have a counter toward, I believe. Uh, I mean, okay, it's a Calliope and a B4, but they still have it. Uh, speaking of which, B4 is being made, and Calliope. It's not great, uh, but it could be farther back, and hold on. No, but it's not, like, they at least have something, uh, rather than, let's say, just the Soviet being like, please get Katusha and get the Veteran C3 to hit the enemy base. Please, 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 please. Anyway, enough pack fire means just push back the KV. Which, right now, Biggles actually has the smallest army on the field right now, which is unfortunate. Um, even the Brit has more of an army than Biggles. And Biggles has just been slowly losing points this entire time. I felt bad. Kenema's, like, losing everything. He's trying to recommission his troops. He constantly has... He now has Calliope raining down on him. Oh, my God. He's literally like, curse you, God. 
what can you do at me now? And God just redirects the calliope shots at his face. Um, anyway. And a B4, why not? You know. Oh, God. It's raining death. Uh, but yeah, no. Um, but uh, the American has eh, mostly kind of regrained his force. He has double calliope. Again, this is a, a common thing I see. If you have a fighting force, pull it back. In terms of an artil mobile artillery. Make sure you pull it back so it doesn't get by air strikes. Now, luckily, in this situation, there's not many direct strikes. There is saw, a saw artillery and zero you have to worry about. So, again, you want to make sure that's pulled back. Cash-wise, they haven't really brought that up. Looks like the Allies, uh, so the Axis, did put down caches. So, Kenema is holding and helping his team. Whereas the Allies have, what, two caches right now? So, oh, three caches. Okay, so they have a, they have a healthy amount, too. Big push on right. Brit's having a real rough time. Um, he is slowly getting more, and, but he's also facing artillery, which makes sense. He's going to pull back. American Force has three Jacksons, and his bar finders are being very aggressive. He's charging all these in. He's actually running them over. And uh, Jacksons are absolutely just going to pulverize him. Air support coming on in with the P-47s. Another string of Jackson shots ring against the Panthers, which may open up the door for the allies to come in the left if this guy's so weak. P-47s come on in. They try to hit the Panther retreating. Alas, not many great shots. AA is active, hopefully shooting down a plane. Um, they will keep hitting the sector, so again, they want to pull back outside the zone. We have a Pack 43 though, coming in. Manages to kill two Jacksons with some great shots. I didn't even notice that was there, but great defensive play, uh, or great defensive hold. P-47 crashes into the building, almost kills the great ears if the building wasn't there. Uh, Calliope, though, will kill everything that's there. Uh, oh my god, there goes Grenadiers, some of the support equipment. Again, great use of the Calliope's, and now here's the issue. He was able to hold against another opponent, but now he needs someone to help him against his own opponent, uh, and that's not happening. The riflemen are literally just going to walk on up and kill everything. That's going to really reduce, uh, sorry, diminish uh, Ken Kenema's forces. Uh, Biggles is down to one unit. He lost his support guns. Uh, and his AT guns and such. Pack 43 though is still doing work. Kills an SU-85 that just so happens to walk in the mid. Plus a Yag Tiger's in play, which holds back a lot more allied armor. So they are getting some decent hits. Um, Nighthawk is not invincible as we just saw. He did lose a number of units due to the Pack 43 and also charging his units blindly at the enemy. Um, he still has one Jackson. Uh, but he still has enough, enough resources to regain, but it is something to take note of. B4 does open fire. Manages to hit the Yag with a great shot. So someone is a believer, or very lucky, either either way. Uh, again, flak emplacement helps guard against infantry going for the packs. So we at least have some... He has two of them here. So Biggles is completely just pushing himself into one sector, which is really interesting because, again, um, you have opponents that have, like, lots of airstrike stuff. And again, the flak will hopefully shoot them down. So this might actually be a zone that is like, okay, there's more AA in this sector. Planes will have less of an effect. But yeah, the pro right now the problem is uh, Kenema completely broke. Kenema doesn't have a fighting force except for his armor force, which is not great when your opponent has a decent amount of, well, armor. Uh, that position might die in a few seconds from Jackson. We'll see. A captain is trying to keep it revealed. Sorry, uh, Jackson might finish it, or... No, he's going to pull back. That's smart. Pack 43 positions. Doesn't want to be hit by it. Uh, Pathfinders, by the way, are IR Pathfinders. But, uh, yeah, they. you know what the allies do have? A Calliope. And, yeah, they're going to rain down hell on, on the um, Axis forces. You need some good hits in. What's this? So, it is... Major Artillery? Is that right? I think it's Major Artillery. Yep, it's Major Artillery, and you know what? He's getting a number of great hits in. Like, I'll be completely honest, that was some good hits. Yep, there's the Major that called it in. Pathfinder's pulling back. Oh, Sudan now moving on in. So again, actually still has a decent force. So that's good. All right. Oh, Panthers diving. I didn't even realize that. They actually killed the Calliopes. So they dove the Calliopes through the lines. Unfortunately, there's still enough fighting, uh, uh, forces that's trying to deal with it. Nothing to stop him. Looks like he, uh, there's no mines in this sector, which is unfortunate. But P-47s come on in. Jackson as well. 
kidding it. Very close to death. He's still giving chase. Pack 43 is not in sight. Jackson might finish him off, but misses because the Panther most likely blitzing right now. But uh, that was a big loss for him. Uh, for Actually, more so for um, Dimitri. Dimitri losing both Calliopes and a lot of his infantry. Kind of a big mess right there. Looks like his AT gun. He can recruit it for sure. But I, what I'm seeing right now is both sides are having trouble locking down or holding a defensive location. Uh, and that's causing a lot of issues. Because while like they'll get a great hit against one side, then the other side will do it against one of their opponents. Like, uh, luckily, Real Knife still has a good fighting force. Armor abound. Uh, T two T-34s, S-25, KV-1, and the B-4 still raining down fire in this sector. Oh, it looks like he's repositioning it. Um, how is... Hold on. How's the Brick doing? Because I know he lost quite a bit. Oh, he's actually regained. He's actually got enough for a croc. So he's doing rather well. He has as much as Nighthawk right now. I mean, you still have an opponent with a, a, a tank destroyer they have to worry about. Flack almost gets killed by a plane that is shot down. Nice. It could be worse, is what I'm saying. Oh, nice recon flare revealing it so the Egg Tiger could possibly shoot it. Stuka coming in. It looked like hanging left. It's hanging a lot of the Soviet. Uh, luckily, Ash. Uh, sorry, Nighthawk does dodge. Calliope coming here. Oh, nice shot with the B4. Almost kills the uh, Flack half track. Rockets. He's actually going into it. Rockets might kill it if he gets a nice, like. Oh, uh, nope. Like, one just going off course, veering off. Blue OKW still behind. Biggles is... Yeah, he's still down. Um, he did use zeroing somewhere. It's coming into mid. Puma is down, though. Jackson's kill it. A lot of armor just chilling right here. This could be a big issue. Oh, yep. Pack 43 gets a great shot. Um, kills that unit. Uh, Pathfinder is pulling back. But again, they need to get out of the zeroing. Same thing with the captain right here. Most of the allies did, though, so they are reacting pretty well to zero. And being like, nah, I'm just going to pull back. Allies are still in the lead, however, with 200 points. Um, overall, uh, could have been far worse, I would say. Let's see, we have a lot of armor moving on in. Pack 43 is right there. That's the big factor. Soviets might try to push in, but also another Pack 40. Oh, this is going to be a slaughter. This is absolutely going to be a slaughter. The Soviets going to lose everything to double packs and a YAG. Oh my god, that's horrifying. A uh, Panther's now moving in. All the. Uh, every. Allies moving in force after defeating the Soviets. In a massive blunder, they're calling in all the air support they possibly can. But alas, it's not enough. Firefly's dead. I think the croc's gonna die. Tiger's like right on it, so that makes sense. That was a good push. That was a solid push. Yeah. Now... Again, it's like, the problem is these pack 43s Luckily, both of them died to artillery fire, so they managed to quickly kill it. And uh, Biggles is down to a very small army. Uh, Kenma also doesn't have a huge army. Most of it is armor. But it, it's doing work. Right now, allies are losing quite a bit. Wait, what is that? Centaur? Is that a centaur? I think it was a centaur. Okay, so centaur charged or maybe was, de you know, uh, decrewed. And they just wanted to kill off the corpse. Why are you killing it? Let the OKW salvage it. Okay. But Ally's still holding the VPs, and that's what matters. Um, still, Key's not in a great position. He has no armor. Um, he still has a good amount of infantry, but still. Um, he's building his own... He's like, F you, I'm building my own 17-pounder. Problem, uh, when you build a 17-pounder, you need some screening. You, like, you need something between the enemy and you. So, Yeah. Calliope opening fire on this sector. May be able to kill... Oh my god, Stuka under fire. Can they kill the Stuka? Oh, well they killed that bunker. That's for sure. Stuka almost gets hit with a second rocket. Does get managed to escape. Calliope gets some great shots in the area. Jackson pulling back from an AT grenade here. And a long range shot, I think, for the Yag. Great kill. Again, Nighthawk has lost most of his uh, infantry forces as well.
Infantry coming on in. Maybe they pick up a bar, just saying. So they, uh, luckily, the allies still have a good amount of infantry, and their uh, B4 is actually doing re rather well at 17 kills. It's Vet 3, it's solid. And uh, Yag Tiger moving in way too much for its own good. There's no. Uh, okay, Panthers are there, so still, it has something. No, but if I have to give like a big critique, it's actually over here. Like, why is this cache still here? Why aren't you sending stuff to kill this cache and like decrew that area and decrew this? Like, the axes are only in this sector. Take the stuff on the left and just cause hell. You can send a couple units. The axes have fallen apart over there. Uh, Biggles has no men that can guard that area. Anyway, we have recon flying overhead to reveal what the enemy has. LEFH firing. 17 pounder is opening fire on the tiger. And as long as they have infantry to guard, that's fine. Luckily, they have a guy with a Piot, but you need something to guard the Piot. Uh, Vickers is trying. Tiger just chilling. He's taking multiple hits. And he'll finally pull back. Like I said, I'm unsure why... They're doing what they're currently doing. Maybe that's just me. Alright, we have the Panther Force moving on in. 17 Pounder being flanked. They need some additional forces. This gun's opening fire, but they need a lot more. Stuka's gonna come down this sec. Oh, Stuka's coming on the left! Okay. Oh, that's... Okay, good mine, but there's way too... This is the problem. You need something to screen. 17 Pounder's great, but you need something to screen out opposing forces so it doesn't get obliterated just by a Panther rush. Like, put something between you and the enemy so you can detect them, reveal that 70 pounder can do work. Meanwhile, uh, Stern Pioneers are on left. Bulldozer and infantry are coming on over. Uh, again, Biggles has pretty much just been, eh, some infantry. Luckily, he's finally using all that fuel he's stored up for a King Tiger. How long would that last? I have no idea. Probably as long as this... Oh, nope. It lives barely. We'll see if this one does. Hopefully, it dies. Like, I'm not, I'm not wishing for your death. I'm just saying that's a really deep charge against the enemy line. when you don't have too much resources in general. Anyway, allies are still trying to win this game. They're trying to take mid. Um, and again, they still have a decent force. They, I mean, like, Dimitri has a pop cap. He absolutely has pop cap. Um, B4, by the way, has yet to fire again. Though, Yag Tiger giving a perfect opportunity to return fire. Just saying. Oh, plane goes down. Oh, plane goes down and almost kills the uh, Vet 2 Pioneer squad right there. Kills a number of bottles. All right, well, uh, you know, that works. Uh, Yag Tiger being hit by the Jackson. Come on, B4. Yeah, I think he fired it. Oh, it does a little damage, not too much, but it would have hit it. Um, but yeah, Red Clock actually lost a number of his men. He still has 1,000 manpower, though. Big push of Axis Infantry moving on in with Assault Artillery actually hitting this sector right now. Uh, luckily, they're moving a lot of the forces outside of it. Uh, or they're trying, but a little bit of a pathfinding issue right there. Again, I'll say it more. Like, this cache is still here. Like, send one infantry unit with a bar. Just kill that. Try to go for this. There's nothing there. And that, like, right... And the reason I say this is so important is because the Axis are actually doing relatively good on resources but you take that away from them they cut down on munitions and fuel which can have a huge effect after minute after minute after minute of them uh you know having less resources and like oh less artillery or less strikes or specials or upgrades or Dim what the hell is dimitri doing uh luckily artillery is hitting the sector with calliope hopefully killing a lot there goes the stuka great hit trying to go for a deep strike not working Unfortunately, that Panther Force that came back earlier, it's back. Ziska now opening fire. You need way more stuff. Screening, mines, stuff like that. And this AT gun is just chilling. Again, I'd be like, every eh, crew. But they're going deep in enemy lines. Jackson focusing elsewhere. Need to focus in mid. Luckily, does hit a mine, I think. Uh, Panther is still charging, though. But again, there's so much infantry. Kenema is like, all right, I'm done with this. I have no infantry. Just charge with the armor. Most of his armor, though, is probably going to die at this point. This gun opening fire. He's doing enough, though, against the allies. AT grenade. Uh, you're, yes, all three Panthers have been hit. Uh, Tiger's coming in to assist. If they kill all three Panthers, Kenema's force is gone. He's absolutely gone. Bulldozer, again, uh, taking hits while this gun is trying to fire. B4 could fire. Again, you could do that uh, direct fire attack, which is 
And it could definitely kill this if it gets a direct shot. It's like 50-50, but I would do it. Um, if you're worried about just firing directly. Nice shot. That's another panther down. He has one remaining. Trying to get the heck out of there. Yag Tiger is coming on in. King Tiger is trying to come on in, but he's now retreating. Dimitri did lose a number of his men, but a lot of it's still alive. Infantry trying to come on in. This panther... So... Wait, is this alive? It is dead. It's just, I... There it goes. It's like just slowly dying. Alright, this panther's still alive. But he has Calliope, and he still has the B4. If this B4 can recon that sector, he's done. That I think it would be close enough where it would be a decent hit. Or at least a good shot of hitting. Uh, no, oh my god, Prince like... You come to me with all this armor. And, and what I do, I'm gonna murder it with three six-pounders. Three six pounders with extra cheese. Now the question, the problem is they have no infantry screens and they need recon. But if they, can, if they, like the pathfinders could do that, the Soviet infantry could just clear it. They could wipe a lot of this armor real quick. Um, but that was a good dive. It was a solid dive because again the Soviets lost a lot of their armor. The Americans did lose some of his armor, including. Uh, hold on, what's this? Oh, that's the bulldozer. Artillery is currently in the sector. So, uh, man, I think you should uh, maybe come back later. Great shot, by the way, with that. I'm assuming Biggles is Elliot Page is causing most of that damage. Nice shot, though. Managed to knock out a lot of the infantry repairing this, uh, the Panther. So while the Panther lived, the, the engineers are less likely, you know, less likely to have lived. Which is good. Because, again, that's Vet 2 repair. So if you remove that, it's a big win. Alright, so right now, it's still like... I mean, like, the Allies are on the back foot, but... And they've taken a number of decent hits. But, like, the Brits thought it's an okay fighting force. The American has an okay fighting force, mostly in mid. Uh, the Soviet still has an okay fighting force. Everyone's okay. Another big push, and yeah, they're pretty much gone. But we'll see. Panther diving again. This is so bad. Uh, so, I'm actually very surprised. Wait again to throw an AT grenade and then fire. Um, the pro almost so Don just clearing everything. Again, big old blob of heavy infantry just wiping everything in its path. Another panther on the floor. Oh, sorry. Up. Uh, you might be firing a T grenade, but you need to do more damage, buddy, before it, like, stops. Killing the mortar. Got the VP. The, the right side got the VP. So, actually, it might be over here for the allies. LFH, there are... Yep, 11 kills. So, at least he has one. Is there another LFH? No, there is not. So, it's only him. Oh, Zeroing is currently now in the area. Uh, where is Cal Calliope's? Oh, they're just in the back. So they're not in zeroing range. The B4 is, but now it's firing. Um, so it will reveal itself. Maybe bring in some, uh, some artillery down on it. Where is it firing? Long range shot. Dimitri says GG. Croc coming on in. Burning a lot of the German infantry. Uh, B4 says it's goodbyes. Panther is coming on in with the King Tiger. And the command... Panzer for just smacking itself into it. Okay. And the Allies surrender. Okay. Um, Dimitri did have the biggest army, so that kind of makes sense. He's like, I'm, I'm just done. Uh, but I, I can't... Like, here's the thing about this game. I can't say that either side was better than the other. Um, like, they each kind of threw units in and did weird strats. But I feel like... Out of like a weird dance, the ally, the axis managed to like do a little better, and that's just sheer luck. Um, uh, not sheer luck. That may be just like happenstance. Like Biggles, by definition, should not have done well in this game because he didn't really have a frontline force. He was all fortifications and versing an opponent with double artillery at the very least. Uh, you should not be in a good state, especially versing Goliaths, but. He built up packs at the right time, right as Allied Armor was pushing forward. <laughs> like, just so happened he built up Pack 43 as, like, the Soviets advance and stuff like that, right? So, if the Soviet advance would have probably happened, that could have probably damaged a lot of Axis forces. They just had enough big guns at the right time to do it, and then a good, some good charges. Um, I do think, like, some strategies could have been better, like the 17-pounder and 18-line, stuff like that, could have been better used and implemented. 
but I get what their strategies were. Uh, look, I'm not gonna, no, no one here was perfect. Like everyone here lost a ton of units in this game. Like Kenema lost all of his infantry. His Panther charges were fine. Biggles had good fortifications, but good God, his infantry couldn't stand. Ashley had probably the best. Was he, yeah, he was probably the best of the Axis. Cause he had still a good fighting force and infantry force. Red Clock kind of more mixed. He had good Pounceful Slayers, but his armor and stuff would die. Uh, real uh, knife had decent forces, but again, his armor died very quick. Dimitri had probably the biggest allied army, uh, although again, his forces died quite a bit. The Brit held on far better than I thought he would after losing so much. Al losing all of his infantry to Zering had been devastating, but yeah, he did well. And then Nighthawk had good forces and a good Jackson line. He just happened to walk into a Pack 43 firing through the br bush and killing two of his units after trying to deal with the Panther charge. So yeah, it's it's one of those things where it's just uh, I don't know. It, it I I feel like this game is co is uh wh where the heck am I crazy? Where where's my I have a button here. Did it fall down? Oh. So for those who don't know, I have a special button that I press, and that allows me to switch my thing back and forth. So that way I can do stuff like this. Voila. All right, so most damage goes to Ken. That makes sense. Kenema did the most Panther charges, and he, he held out well. Also, allies didn't press on a point of weakness, which was the out, which was the Axis flank. The left flank was absolutely open. Um, I do agree. More mines would have been better. Um, uh, instead of three AT guns, should get the 18 placement, and yeah, mines are huge. Mythologi mythological, he did place get the 17 powder. It died, so that's why I got the three AT guns. Most, yeah, top kills goes to Kenma. Kenma was easily the best here. And then, uh, Dimitri... No, yeah, Dimitri... No, I'm sorry, Key. The Brit actually got top kills. Let me put that through. The Brit, who lost all of his infantry, was the person who got top kills. I, I just... I need to point that out because of the fact that people are like, Oh, he lost his army. He, you know, he probably didn't do very well. And you look here, it's like... Actually, he, he did pretty well for, you know, his situation he was in. So I'll give credit where credit's due. So, uh, yeah, no, that could have gone, it could have gone better for him, but it absolutely went fine, I would say. It was definitely better than, uh, how do I put this? It was definitely better than what it could have been. I would say that. It's, it, or like, I, I would say. But anyway. So right now, um, I do want to take note of the person who submitted this. Uh, so, let's see here. I want to make sure I got this right. Uh, do, 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 nope, that's not it. Do, 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 do. I can't pull up the guy's name. I don't know why. That's so weird. I had it on the right here, and it's not, not pulling up anymore. Anyway, uh, weirdly enough, I believe the person who submitted this game is Biggles. Uh, because he talked about the zeroing, which was a, a good factor. It did wipe a lot of armies. But anyway, uh, if it is Biggles, and I'll, I'll confirm this. If, if it's not Biggles, I'll put it up here uh, in the YouTube video. But thank you very much, Biggles, for submitting this. And uh, yeah, it was a solid game. Definitely weird strats, but hey, it worked out. So good job. But anyway, let's go on to the next one. Hello, everyone. This is Gray Shop. Before you guys go, I want to give a special shout out to Patreon supporters Joey G240, Afria, Ace, Tony B95, Epic Pleb, Some Tool, and Net Kuba. Thank you all for your support. Thank you all for watching. And seriously, I could not do this without all of you. So thank you so very much. This has been Grayshot17, and I'll see all of you next time.